All right, guys. Um, so this video lecture, um, I'm hoping it's just going to be one, uh, maybe two brief ones, depending on how much I get through here. Um, but much of this week is going to focus on characters. Um, last week focused a lot on conflict and setting. Um, characters are sort of that third piece where all of these three things are very closely interact or inter, um, intertwined. Um, <clears throat> conflict is usually um, conflict is usually created out of um, a combination of character and setting. Um, and then settings, setting can actually act as a character at times. Um, so these three elements are all closely related. Um, so we're kind of, I'm trying to get these three elements sort of enmeshed together through these video lectures. Um, this week's going to focus largely on character. Um, but then also point of view, which is another part of character. So a lot of these things are very closely inter uh, intertwined. Um, I'm going to begin with this uh, quote from Kurt Vonnegut that I love. I think it's a great way of thinking about characters. Um, and he says, be a sadist no matter how sweet and innocent your characters are. Make awful things happen to them so the reader may see what they're made of. Um, we're going to see this um, a similar metaphor or analogy quite often as we talk about characters. <clears throat> so, um, as with everything in fiction, um, in creative writing in general, we want to show, don't tell. Don't explain to us what a character is thinking. Don't, um, you know, devolve into these inner monologues if you can avoid it. Try to show us their motivation. Show us how they um, look, talk, interact. You can show us their motivations often through um, their behavior, okay? Um, character and conflict. This is a really silly analogy. Um, it's called the tree analogy. Uh, this was um, told to me in one of my introductory graduate classes, and it's something that sort of stuck with me. Um, that you think of character and conflict as, in character development, and developing conflict, how these are so intertwined, what you do, and you could even argue that setting is a part of this. Um, a way to think about it is you take your main character, or take any of your characters, you take your character, um, you put them up in a tree, and then you throw rocks at them, and then you see how they react. So um, it's silly, but I think it's also kind of interesting in that um, a good way to think of characters, character development, and conflict and even setting, if you think of the tree as being the setting, um, you know, you take your character, you put them in the setting, and then you throw rocks at them, you throw uh, conflict at them, and you see how they react, okay? Uh, characterization through action, detail, and dialogue. Um, that's part of the show, don't tell thing I was just mentioning, that um, it's not helpful to the reader to just flat out describe to them what a character looks like, what they want, what their past is, it's better to reveal these things in an active way. It's better to show these to the reader. Um, and then I want to talk about the bullshit of likable characters. Um, it's sort of this horrible trend that infuriates me in modern publishing that's been going on for maybe the last 15, 20 years, which is that um, our protagonists, our main characters, should be likable. If we like our characters, then um, the reader will root for them stronger. This isn't true. Uh, you meet a lot of people in your life who are not likable. Um, we're beginning to see... Um, it, it's still... This idea of characters needing to be likable is so very much at the forefront. Um, and this is a new, uh, a new thing in literature and TV and movies. And when... Uh, a writer goes against this, which used to be very, very popular, but now, contemporarily, when a writer goes against this, it's a big deal. You know, people freak out over Walter White or uh, Frank Underwood, um, these characters that are not likable, these characters that, um, while they're the main character, they're also the villain or they become the villain. Um, you know, think of Harvey Dent in The Dark Knight, who becomes Two-Face. This transformation, or this um, character, these characters, main characters, who are unlikable, um, 
readers, viewers, we tend to make a big deal out of it. It sort of messes with our minds when we aren't sure if we're rooting for this character or if we want to see their demise. Um, but this was very, very popular for a long, 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 long time. And it's only been within the last, you know, 20 years or so that there's been this uh, social push, this cultural push in the United States where, the, where our characters should be likable. So don't even think about if your character is likable or not. I don't care. You shouldn't care. We, it, you know, it's so compelling when we don't like our main character. Um, we're attracted to the darkness, to anarchism, to freedom, to hedonism, to sociopathy. These things are interesting. We all love a great villain. We all love Darth Vader, a compelling villain, a tragic villain. These are always fascinating. So it's a really, it's a fairly new, um, a fairly new concept. Well, not new concept. That's the wrong word. It's a fairly new trend where the hero and the villain are so black and white. Um, we, for many, many years, these were, you know, not, they were both more in a gray area. Um, and you should have seen that this past week in The Other Place by Mary Gateskill. We've read some several other pieces that uh, reflect this. So I think it's important for us to mention that your characters do not have to be likable. And then there's this great quote from uh, Cesar Cruz, one of my favorite quotes, art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. Keep that in mind as you begin working on your, uh, um, on your short, big short story for this class. Now, um, these next couple slides cover a lot of information, but it's somewhat repetitive. I've sort of pulled these together from different sources, um, so I may sort of jump around a bit here. Um, when it comes to characters, um, this isn't always the true, it isn't always true, but I encourage students to avoid cliches and stereotypes. Sometimes, you know, an archetype of a character, you know, the um, angry young man, for example, which is very popular in like Hemingway's stories. Um, sometimes you need that archetype or that cliche or that stereotype. But I always think uh, writers should strive for an originality in any way they can. Um, so you should research the people you're writing about, okay? Um, make sure you know what you're writing about. You should always know what you're writing about, but say you uh, want to write this story that's about sort of this personal experience of yours, but you want your main character to be a doctor. Um, make sure you know how doctors talk, how they interact, what they say to each other, that sort of thing. Make sure you're doing that kind of research. Um, you should always write sympathetically about your characters, even the antagonists. Um, it's very rare um, that you have a character who's just pure evil, a villain that's just pure evil. There's often, um, and the best villains, the most compelling villains, have some sort of tragic backstory or um, some sort of motivation that you actually kind of understand. Um, you know, if you think of... Heath Ledger's Joker is a great uh, is a great example of this. Purely, uh, you know, obviously psychotic, obviously a villain, obviously a bad guy. But when you think about what he's trying to accomplish, it's actually kind of scary how he's trying to accomplish something that is somewhat admirable, but he's going about it in the complete wrong way. Or you think of Darth Vader, you know, his fall to the dark side was um, from a very tragic and emotional and personal place that we can relate to. So always write sympathetically about your characters, even your antagonists, but you should avoid sentimentality. Don't be, don't um, be, you know, uh, overly cliched, emotional, and sentimental. Try to keep it real. Real uh, Life is often rather gritty, rather dirty, dark. It's often, you know, a gray area. Keep that in mind when you're writing. Um, something else. Create real people, not characters. We all have flaws. We all have quirks. We all have mannerisms, uh, weird body language things, weird obsessions. Make your characters real people. I always think about this. I'm a, you know, when I write my characters, I'm a very anxious person. 
I talk with my hands a lot. I stutter sometimes when I get nervous. Um, I sometimes have problems with eye contact. Um, I often make weird faces when I speak, like right now. I incorporate that kind of stuff into my characters. Um, when I was a kid, I really wanted to be a paleontologist very badly. Um, I had some very strange things happen to me when I was a kid. I grew up in a very strange place. Um, I have my own sort of nervous tics. I incorporate these sort of things into my writing to make my characters more believable. Um, when I get nervous, I often sort of, if I'm at work or at my desk and I'm nervous, I sometimes straighten paper clips. I make my characters do that. Um, I have this weird fascination with the weather. I like to know how it's like the, what the weather's going to be outside. Not because it makes me nervous or it freaks me out, but I feel like the weather contributes a lot to my emotion, to my moods. So I often have, I have this one character that I've used in a few different stories who, um, I've taken it to the extreme, but he is obsessed with the weather. He's always constantly checking the weather, or always has the weather channel on in the background. So you give characters these quirks, these flaws, these mannerisms, and it makes them feel more real. We all understand that we have these things and we all see them in other people. It helps make your characters more realistic. Um, okay. So um, how to develop characters, that was all on that previous slide. Um, one thing to think about uh, with, there's generally considered two types of characters, round characters, flat characters. A round character is a developed character who has several different traits, maybe different motivations, maybe different, um, you know, a complex backstory. They feel like a real person. A flat character is the opposite. A flat character is usually a, a secondary character that serves some sort of function. They may be a stock character, a stereotype, whatever. Um, your protagonist and antagonist should be round. They should be developed. Um, we're going to get a little bit more here into flat characters um, on the next slide, which is probably going to be a second video. Um, think of your character's reliability. Um, are they reliable? Are they unreliable? Um, Reliability is not only an issue for the for a narrator, it's also an issue for characters. Do your characters lie? Do they have a warped sense of emotional, you know, sensibility? I don't know. Um, I was just thinking about my my mother when I was talking about that is she's um, if she were a character, she's reliable. She doesn't lie, but she's a very emotional person and often um, reacts strongly to emotional situations. She overreacts. Um, and it's just, you know, it's a reflex, and then she sort of calms down and starts to think logically. So there may be moments where she is unreliable because she's um, thinking emotionally, not logically. Your characters may have a situation like that as well. Um, characters as objects, this goes along with round and flat characters which is going to continue on the next on the uh, next slide and in the next video lecture. I'm going to end this now, and then there'll be a very brief second part.